and everyone. I'm Jen. I'm filling in for Ava today. And I'm just going to welcome everyone. Welcome Steve um, as our guest. Please know that you are more than welcome to join in our table topics and help give some feedback. We always want to hear from you. And, <clears throat> and with that, I'll turn it over to today's uh, Toastmaster, Winte. Mr. Toastmaster, take it away. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I will, uh, we'll get the meeting started. So there are two main parts of the meeting. Um, the first part will be prepare speech section where Toastmaster uh, will deliver their speech based on the, the pathways, based on the project they are working on their, uh, in their pathways. Uh, second part is my favorite part, table topic, where we can actually practice our um, thinking and speaking on the feet uh, skills, um, which is an improvised part uh, to put people on the spot, but you have to respond quickly and answer the uh, questions. Um, as Toastmaster today, I would like to introduce uh, fellow Toastmasters who will help uh, running the, the whole meeting um, as individuals and and accountable for, um, for on each section. Uh, first, we'll have uh, Gram Grammarian today. Mr. Grammarian, uh, would you like to give us an introduction on your, yes. on your role? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Wente. I, uh, I will be the grammarian today, and I have three responsibilities for the grammarian role. And the first one is providing the word of the day. And this is a word that is to be used throughout. It's kind of like a challenge to use it whenever you're speaking, whether it's table topics or whether it's the uh, speech or, you know, just kind of throughout whenever you're speaking, if you throw it in there, it's, it's just kind of an awesome little challenge, um, to try to, and the word of the day is foment and I'll put it in the chat. It's a verb and it means to stir up. So an example in a sentence is the civilians accuse their leader of fomenting political unrest. I'm just going to stick this in the chat really quick. Okay. And then uh, along with that, my next item of responsibility is to record different filler words that people use when they're speaking. So kind of just keeping track of people using ah, um, so, like, and, and things like that. And so at the end of the meeting, whenever I kind of give a report, it'll just give you an idea of what words you're using, which words you should try to maybe steer away from, and just gives you a little bit of an evaluation on that. And the third thing is just kind of noting noting different awkward phrases or or things that you're using, um, or or maybe really awesome phrases and things that kind of stand out that make your speech uh, give a little bit more of a punch. So giving that feedback as well is my third responsibility, and that is my role for a grammarian. Thank you, Wente. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next. Next section, we'll have our uh, prepared speech section. We do have one uh, speaker today, Michelle Jones. Go ahead and introduce uh, your timer and awards. Oh. And your topics, Master, after that. Yes. Uh, let me introduce uh, sorry. <laughs> my timer. Timer first. Mm. Hi, everyone. I'm going to be the timer today, also. And I am going to uh, have background changes. So I have my hand raised up here. And go ahead and check that out. When each person gets to their time, today Michelle has a speech that goes between five and seven minutes. So at five minutes, I'm going to change my screen to green to let her know that she made at least her five minutes. When she gets to her six minute mark, I'll turn it to yellow and then red when we get to seven. And that when the screen goes to red, that means you just hurry it up. You have 30 seconds to finish it up and, and end your speech. And that goes the same with the 
get that out of there. That goes the same with the evaluation in all the table topics. So the evaluation is between two and three minutes. I'll head it at green at two, yellow at two and a half, red at three. And for the table topics, it's one to two minutes. Same thing, one green, one and a half yellow, and two red. So that is the timer. And afterwards, I will go ahead and do a timer report and offer the awards. And that's my role today. Thank you, Jennifer. Looking forward to the uh, timer and the awards. Um, I would like to introduce Table Topic Masters. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Karin. I will be the Table Topic Master today. So later on, I will introduce the topic that we will be discussing. And since there's just one speaker today, we have a little more ample time for everyone to have an opportunity if they want. I prepared 10 questions. And if my counting is right, there are 10 of us in this room. So um, an opportunity for everyone if you would like to participate. So I will be speaking to you all a little bit later. Thank you. And uh, uh, thank you. Next, we'll, we'll move on to evaluator for today. You don't have to introduce the evaluators. Uh, so. Okay. We'll just be working behind the scenes, judging me. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Uh, your chance when, when it's evaluation. Um, yes, so let me uh, introduce and welcome our first speaker of today, uh, Michelle Jones. Uh, Michelle is working on her pathway, which is mentor program. He will deliver uh, on her first mentoring experience within uh, Toastmaster today. Uh, the, po the topic is together we achieve more. I'll turn to Michelle. Together, we achieve more. If you haven't experienced this yet, I can't wait until you do. One of the things that I love the most about Toastmasters is our opportunity to have mentors and to be mentored. My speech today, this project is talking about a mentor experience that I've had within Toastmasters. Carmen Hill, and I have been paired together as of April of 2022. And luckily, as part of Toastmasters for the past two years, I have many mentees and I have a mentor myself. I'm gonna to talk to you today about some of the things that we do as mentors, the experience that I've had within my relationship with Carmen Hill. And I wanted to share this great quote with you from Henry Ford. It resonates perfectly when we talk about mentorship, which is coming together is the beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Let me start by telling you about how Carmen and I came together. Carmen and I first met in April in Toastmasters. And I thoroughly enjoyed meeting her. And I will tell you, as you start your mentee and mentor relationships, the most important thing about that is getting to know each other, getting to know each other on a professional level and a personal level. But as you're getting to know each other, it's talking about what your aspirations are. What are your goals? What do you want to achieve within Toastmasters and even outside? of Toastmasters. And one of the biggest things that I like to talk about is what are your fears? Mm -hmm. I think in joining Toastmasters, we are all working to overcome a fear, whether that's fear of presenting, fear of speaking up, fear of taking on some of these leadership positions or even roles throughout Toastmasters as we go. It is very important to go through and understand what are these fears, goals, and aspirations of your mentee. And you can also relate to these as mentors because we probably felt all of the same things as we joined and started overcoming some of these fears 
as we continued along our journey. Luckily, Carmen being in the Round Rock area, we've gotten to meet a few times. This is neither one of our favorite picture, by the way. <laughs> we will have to create more pictures as we go out more. Uh, but we do like to ferment some margaritas when we go out. We mix it up and like to have a, a couple of drinks as well. Because again, you you are learning about these people from a very personal level too, so that you can overcome some of your challenges. As we grow and we keep together, some of the things that Carmen and I worked on to progress is what are some of those common goals that we both have? TED Talk is one of them. Both Carmen and I want to deliver a TED Talk. And we keep saying one day, but in all of our mentor meetings that we have each month, we're talking about TED Talks and what are the things that we can do to prepare ourselves to get there and to continue to stretch ourselves because we know what this ultimate goal is that we have. Carmen joined the Presentation Mastery Path. And within that path, as her mentor, I am here to help her through the Toastmasters website. We all know that that can be challenging, knowing where to go, what to do, what to click on. So I'm there to assist her through those pieces, as well as signing up for roles. One of the challenges or the fears that Carmen had was being the Toastmaster. Wente is our Toastmaster for the first time here today, and I'm so excited that you are. Carmen had that same fear as I did as well, and we follow that script line for line several times as we volunteered for that role until we became more comfortable with it. And then you're now seen as a leader and helping others take on that role for the first time. Carmen also decided to join our officers group. And as an officer, she was the VP of membership last year. And now I'm the VP of membership. So Carmen gets to mentor me in that role, not only in that role, but I will tell you that as you start growing these mentor relationships, you will recognize if you are the mentor, that you will get mentored by your mentee just as much as you provide that assistance to them. So I encourage you all to grow those relationships and keep working on your paths within Toastmasters and the things that you can do to become a better leader and a better speaker. As we started working more together, we found common things that we could do. One of them in May of this year, Carmen inside of her presentation mastery path had to do a one hour podcast. So in our mentor meeting, I said, hey, guess what? I've done several podcasts in my role. I would love to help you. And as we're both officers and working to grow the membership of our club, what a better idea than to do a podcast for Toastmasters. And now this podcast is posted externally on our YouTube channel, as well as our SharePoint. I encourage you all to go watch this podcast. It was our first endeavor together, and we were able to learn and grow from it and determine things that we could do better when we do the next podcast, whether it be for Toastmasters or any other professional or personal endeavor. With that, I will tell you that in my experience as a mentor, I have gotten to help quite a few people in their journey, but it's also helped me so much. I am learning more about myself and how I can best help other people. One of the things that I've noticed about me is sometimes I start to give too much advice and I push some of my own aspirations on other people versus just asking questions and listening and ensuring I'm helping them move along their path. So that is something that I'm personally working on to ensure that I am being the best mentor that I can. For all of you, please continue your mentor relationships and make sure that you are doing that with purpose. Come together, keep together and stay together and you will be much more successful.
Thank you, Michelle. That that is fantastic, and I feel related because Carmen actually she introduced me to the Toastmaster Club. Also, she is my mentor. Uh, we worked together on my first two presentations. Uh, I can definitely feel the connection here. Um, yes, and I, love that. I, I I feel really really <laughs> great. You guys want to go for the TED talk? That, that would be a great achievement. And once you finish your level two in your path, you can become a mentor. So keep working. Working on that. Okay. Uh, so now it's time for, for us to move on to the um, improvised portion of our meeting, the table topic section. Um, we'll have our I table we topic need master. A minute to write our feedback, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. One minute yes. to give feedback to Michelle. And I'll set the timer now. Yes, privately in the yes. chat or in Teams. Yes. All right, one minute's up. You're doing great, Wintay. I know for the first probably five times that I was topics master, Ava's always here to be like, wait, no, stop. <laughs> it takes several times doing it to get that. Yes. Get your role. Good job. Yeah. Um, I, I think everyone, uh, we collect everyone's feedback for Michelle. Let's move on to table topic. For, for the day. All right, so today's table topic, I'm new, so I hope, you know, this isn't redundant that it's been covered before, but this is a buzzword in the world today and especially in technology. So I'm sure you can already imagine what it is, but today's table topic is about AI, artificial intelligence. And let me put this on presentation mode. So before we dive in, uh, perhaps you are feeling some kind of way already about the topic of artificial intelligence. Working at Dell, I'm sure we have a few people who work in it directly, maybe as an engineer or even from the product development side, or perhaps you don't touch it at all in your day-to-day -day work, but I'm sure you've heard about it. So to put us all on the same playing field, I want us to step into a beginner's mind when it comes to artificial intelligence. And let's just work with the basic concept of what it is. So what is AI? Uh, essentially, it is the capability of computer systems or algorithms to imitate intelligent human behavior. So working with that definition, computers, algorithms, imitating what we can do in our own minds as humans, um, intellectually and behaviorally. And some examples which you've probably run into in your day-to-day -day life include chatbots, such as ChatGPT, driverless passenger vehicles, facial recognition, social media algorithms, speech-to-text, art generated by AI, voice generation, and much more. So going with that general definition, I, let's dive in. So I'm going to pull up my list of questions here. They are all about the same level. So there's not highly difficult questions and beginner questions. They're all based on imagination. 
and your experience with AI, what AI can do or what you think about AI. So with that, I'll have every volunteer can pick a number. I have 10 questions available and whatever number you pick will relate to the question you will answer. So do we have anyone willing to volunteer to take the first question? Awesome. Trace Orb, uh, please let me know if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. Yes, that's fine. Tracer, all right. So pick a number, one through 10. One. One, okay, great. If you could create an AI-powered device to improve your specific daily life, what would it be? Thank you for the question. So out of everything that I can use that can actually robotize my thought pattern, uh, it will be something that help me to actually deprocrastinate. So instead of having that natural tendency to procrastinate, I will have AI or any tool related to AI that will help me to think so that when I am ready to procrastinate, it will it will alert me so that I will avoid doing that and then I'll focus on the task that will help me the most or that will help me to get the most out of my day. So that is something that I will do. And then once I am successful with that, I'll find a way to share it with others so that others can also benefit from that. And then from there, it might actually be improved because it might be the version one and we might have to test it multiple times. It might have to be changed or adapted depending on the region, on the age. So there might be several versions. But that will be definitely uh, my plan to have a, a AI device that will help me to deprocrastinate. And thank you, Madam Topic Master, for the question. That was great. I love that. I certainly could use a AI device to help with procrastination. That I think that could be useful for many people. All right. Moving on. Do we have any other volunteers? Awesome, Jenny. All right, if you come off hey. mute, what uh, number between two and 10 now? One's been taken. Uh, I'll take two, please. Two, okay. It's a very similar question. However, if you could create an AI-powered device to solve any problem, it doesn't have to necessarily be your daily life, what would it be? Yeah, that's a very good question. AI is everywhere all around us. So I was studying from the... Smaller one around me and then going to the big bigger picture. So just take what uh, Tracy just, uh, just mentioned, like daily life and then what do I need the day, uh, AI for? The first thing I think of is my calendar. I have two kids to manage and then also one husband. We have lots of schedules between the sports, between the school clubs, between my own say dentist appointment or kids appointment, et cetera. So, if I can have an AI putting everything together, including the emails from the teacher, I always like have piles of emails that I need to catch up because say this club tell, uh, is telling me what kind of activities that they have and then what time we need to be where. So this is the first AI function that I can think of if, if, if it can help me browse my email and then put everything together with me. And then of course with, with the reminder and then it's better have the GPS, so I know where I should go. So that would be great. On the bigger picture, I'm thinking what's happening around the world. Everybody knows like it's a chaos now. So if the AI can kind of monitor and then know where the trouble will be and then kind of send the same of the ambassador going there, talking to the people who might be creating or mounting some of the problems, and then I think this will be great. I really hope like the, uh, this is the world with peace, harmony, everybody is kind to each other. Even better if the AI can creating that kind of equi uh, uh, equitable world, that will be the best. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, that was great. Uh, definitely, I think that the calendar Piece could help so many people. And the proactive approach to conflict is really interesting. So thank you for sharing that. All right. We still have uh, eight more to go. So who would like to volunteer next?
All right, Bianca, we have three through 10 left. Three. Three, okay. Is there a story, perhaps a book, a movie, or a TV show that comes to mind when you think about AI? Actually, for some reason, I have been in the mood to read some sort of dystopia fiction, which is unusual for me because I'm typically a nonfiction reader. And I've had a lot of trouble finding a book on this topic. I actually have been imagining these scenarios where in our current world, people are feeling so disconnected and lonely and how AI might start to form relationships. Just like in your definition, there is something about AI that's meant to mimic human intelligence and interactions. And so I've been really uh, titillated by this idea that people might form relationships with AI. And I have really wanted to find some sort of literature that explores this connection in maybe kind of a twisted way. But I really struggle to find anything that's on topic. So if anybody in this group has any recommendations on books that you've seen related to the topic of AI and humans forming relationships with AI, I would be really interested to see any of your reading recommendations because frankly, nothing comes to my mind. That's great, thank you. Uh, since we have a little time, I will create space if anyone wants to jump in, if they have a recommendation for Bianca before we move on, we can also follow up later. All right. I, there, you know, to Bianca, there is a story. I don't know if it, I think it's a short story that comes to mind, and I can't remember the title, um, but it is frequently referred to when people talk about AI and the human relationship. I'm not sure if it goes into like an uh, like an intimate relationship where you have like an emotional connection, but I can I can send you that when I remember the title so I'll yes I would I would love that this book if it isn't written already it's like it's coming and I really want to read it yeah the tv show Westworld kind of reminds me of that where there's um it's AI they're robots and it's a western world and humans go it's like an amusement park but then like relationships start bonding between the people who work at the park the the robots and the people who visit so that if you're looking for an entertainment piece, that could be something. I haven't seen that. Thank you. Also, Humans, um, the TV show Humans is very similar to uh, what you're describing. Yeah. Okay. Where is that? What platform is that on? Oh, it came out a while ago. It's more, I guess it's more like intelligent robots, mm -hmm. uh, but they have emotional connections with these people who aren't actual people. And then one movie I can think of is Matrix. So it's like the oh. robot is taking over the world. It's not the affection that Bianca mentioned, but then it's something like AI is like uh, flipping the world and then whether human uh, are controlling the world or managed by the robot. I hadn't even thought about the possibility of like a romance novel with AI. <laughs> I was thinking more like dysfunctional. <laughs> you can start writing about that. <laughs> Actually, Black one Mirror. more. Black Mirror has a few. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. The, the movie Her um, is also about a, a man who has a relationship with his um, AI phone device. Uh, so, well, wow, now I'm thinking about all of them. Yeah. Great. Great, great recommendation. Thanks, great. Everyone. Yeah. So, um, again, I just would love to stay on this topic, but uh, let's have a chance for someone else to volunteer. I can go ahead. All right, Kylie. So four through 10 are left. Any numbers? Five. Five. Right, we're just going chronological. Love it. Okay. So, oh, no, you skipped. Sorry. I said four through 10 and you said <laughs> five. Okay. So what is a potential application of AI technology that could improve your current role at Dell? I would say a potential role of AI in my current role would be within forecasting. One of the most important components of my role is ensuring that we have 
sufficient inventory in order to support our promotional plans and also just basic business demand. So having AI predict the run rate of our current products during key promotional periods, such as Black Friday in July or Prime Day in July, um, or even the most recent Prime Day that we had would be very crucial in ensuring that we don't run out of inventory for our customers. Unfortunately, that is something that happens quite a bit, especially within our third party assortment because we have so many different SKUs. We have actually thousands of SKUs online um, that aren't Dell branded SKUs, but that are third party SKUs that we assort through our distribution partners. All of this forecasting currently is very manual. So having an AI that's able to use predictive learning based on previous run rates in previous years would be very beneficial and better understanding what our demand should look like or could look like uh, based on not only just run rates, but also trends in, um, in, the, in the world and what, like what direction we um, are moving. Great, thank you so much, Kylie. It, it sounds like this is something you've been able to contemplate a bit. It sounds like these applications are absolutely just like ready and waiting for this yes. type of technology. <laughs> yes, very much so. waiting. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have another volunteer? I can go, go next. Awesome. Wente. So number six through 10 or four is left. Uh, num I paid uh, number seven. Number seven. Okay. On a scale of one to 10, with one being highly skeptical and 10 being completely open to possibility, how do you feel about the role of AI in society? Um, so personally, I'm a optimistic guy. Uh, I look things over on the, on the brighter side. I'd like to think uh, that way. Uh, to me, AI on the I mean on the technical side definitely is a huge benefit to human uh, to human race. Um, on the social society side, um, I'm thinking it might it might be helpful. Probably uh, more on a scale five to seven more uh, beneficial than it can do harm. Mm. Um, I, I, for, for example, they, uh, I'll, I'll make an example. For example, AI, uh, let's say uh, there's camera face recognition, there's uh, camera detection in public space, right? And uh, let's say in, tra in train station or in the open uh, space, like Plaza that definitely help us detect um, potential threats or suspects, right? Let's say um, carry carry weapons, carry a bomb, things like that. I I, I definitely think that that helps. Um, uh, I think the other the second thing I want to mention is probably will also improve our uh, living standard. Um, that makes people uh, enjoy their life more uh, to provide quality life. That's my, uh, my projections. Thank you. Thank you, Wente. It's a very thorough look at both the positives and negatives of AI and Sounds like you, with five to seven, you have a lot of optimism with a healthy dose of skepticism, which I think is, I'm, I'm seeing in uh, the conversations I'm having around AI. Thank you. All right, do we have another volunteer?
Drew, would you like to take a stab? I know you're taking notes of everyone's grammar. <laughs> yeah, I can I can give it a go. I was gonna say that. <clears throat> I'll take a break from that and uh, give it a go. Okay, so we have eight through ten, six and four. Perfect. I'll do nine. Nine. Okay. Imagine there is a soccer sports league that is humans versus humanoid AI. The humanoid can replicate the same physical athletic abilities as the players on the human team. So physically, it's like the team playing against themselves. Mm -hmm. Who will win? <laughs> and why? Thank yes. Thank you for the question. This is a great question. I love it because I play soccer and I love play. I love the sport of soccer. I think that that's a very hard question to answer because of the creativity that humans can produce and how they produce within their athletic abilities. But if it's very even playing field or very similar, I think that the humanoids or the robots for AI would essentially make less errors because of their algorithm or structure of how they would move the ball kind of like in a almost like a pinball like formation of moving things back to one another like if you were to draw it up on a piece of paper but I also think the greatest thing about humans is our ability to create and innovate and kind of do things that are so amazing and including create AI itself so I do, it is a very, I'm not 100% sure on who would actually win the game, but I do think that they would do really well and it would either be a tie or the humanoids may win by, by one goal or something like this. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have for that question. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Drew. Yeah. I think your, your experience with soccer definitely helps in a, uh, you know, you can put yourself out there on the field and see what that could feel like playing against someone who looks and has the same capabilities physically. Now it's down to the creativity versus, you know, the strategic mind. Mm -hmm. So I love that answer. All right. We have a couple more questions left. And I think we, if, if we want to end in two minutes, we could probably take one or two more people. I think on our agenda, we end it. 1242 but we could have space for one more oh i'm we're... sorry oh, oh do we actually um on the agenda what's the timing since there's only one evaluation uh, 1245 for the evaluation okay so cool one, one more. so we have two minutes if it ends at 1245 this is if i'm am i looking at the agenda correctly yes okay so maybe one more person And, and while you're thinking if you want to go, I'm going to have to plug in my computer because it's telling me it's going to die. Cindy, would you like to try? Still too scared. That's fine. That's fine. Jen, would you like to participate? Can't time myself. I can time. too much going on. Michelle, you want to, you, are you volunteering to time? I can time, Jen. Oh, okay. that'd be great. Awesome. Okay. But you can pick eight through 10 or number six. How about number okay. six? Okay. If you had an AI humanoid robot as a best friend, what would you do together? Well, that's a great question. Thank you, Topics Master. If I had an AI robot as my best friend that would be pretty cool because i would be able to teach this robot to be very much like myself but enough of a difference that we don't drive each other crazy we could go everywhere together and fill in each other's sentences we could i i could use my best friend to take care of the dogs when I don't feel like getting up at 5.30 in the morning to walk them. That would be really great. 
I could teach this, my AI best friend to do a lot of my job and uh, help with that. But aside from that, we could also play a lot of board games together, uh, go for long trips as car rides that I, I just enjoy, love it, love going through, uh, looking, especially this time of the year, to look at all the, the leaves changing and just to have someone to hang out with. So I think if I had an AI best friend, I would be able to do everything I like to do without having to compromise anything. And that would be what I would do. Boy, that was a tough one. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jennifer. I think uh, Karen might be away for a second. Um, it's time for, for us to move on to evaluation section of the meeting. Uh, we do have one speech today. Our evaluator is Kelly, who will give uh, her evaluation for Michelle uh, today. Let's welcome Kelly. Thank you, Toastmaster. Michelle, I want to start out by just saying that you did a fantastic job. You had a topic that was very inspiring and relatable to everyone in this meeting. I would say if I could summarize your speech in, in one word, it would be inspiring. Throughout the entire presentation, I felt very motivated to continue my relationship with my mentor and explore the different ways that I can use my mentor to improve not only my public speaking, but also just my life in general and taking advantage of that even more. You asked me to look out specifically for your pace and if you delivered a clear and concise message. So I'm gonna break both of those down. Your pace I felt was very steady throughout the entire presentation. You have a very calming presence, which I think is something you should definitely lean into. You, didn't have any awkward pauses or any moments where I felt you were rambling and I couldn't understand what you were saying. You had very appropriate pauses right before transitions. Um, there was even a time when you were talking and you uh, brought up people's fears and you paused for a little bit longer. And I felt like that pause was very impactful because it allowed the audience to start thinking about their, their own fears and how they felt about the message that you were delivering. So continue to look for those opportunities where you can add pause for impact because I feel like in your instance and in this speech in particular, it really worked for you. I really, appreciated your slides. Those helped me to keep on track with your message and ensure that I was following correctly. You broke your overall speech down into very simple um, points. I think you had three points, which I love. I think every speech should be broken up into three. That's something that's really easy for the audience to follow. And so your slides really helped articulate that. You didn't have too many words on your slides, which is something that we can often fall into, but I felt that you kept them very simple and they added a lot to your speech. One area I would challenge you in is your intro. I felt that it was mysterious and inspiring, but maybe not necessarily as captivating as you'd like it to be. So maybe trying a question or something that shocks the audience would draw them in a little bit more, um, and then you can carry on with the rest of your speech in the same way that you did. Additionally, I would also add a couple of points on actions that the audience can take. You spoke a lot to your story, and I wanted so much to replicate your success that you found in your mentorship, but I was left a little bit wondering how I could do that. So maybe adding in a few pointers and things that uh, the audience can do in order to replicate that success would be helpful in the future, but overall, great job. Thank you very much, Kyla. <laughs> Thank you for the evaluation. You know, Kelly, that's, uh, it is a very detailed evaluation. 
Um, let's move on to next. Oh, thank you for all the participants today. Um, it's time. Uh, we can have a timers report on each section. Yes, everyone qualified today. I think did I qualify, Michelle? Everyone qualified today. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And just give me a moment and I'm going to put in a, uh, a link into the chat where you can go in and vote and tell us who you think is the best. I'm going to turn that over to the uh, grammarian, I guess, or back to the Toastmaster, I'm sorry, to, um, to take it over and I'll go ahead and finish up the, the tallies here. Yes, so we can go ahead and have the grammarian report while we're uh, probably waiting on the, on the voting. Definitely. So for the grammarian report, uh, Michelle did a great job. I have also noticed they used the word uh, foment, the word of the day. Awesome job there. <laughs> uh, Trezor uh, did an awesome job. And I liked your pauses. You had a one great pause that I think you were about to say a filler word of some sort, but kind of just gave a little bit more of time of a pause. And I know that we like that. Um, and Jenny, your favorite word they used a couple of times was a, uh, so just be mindful of that. Um, Bianca did really well. I think you might've liked the word um, I might've heard it once, just something to look out for. Kylie, you also had some really great pauses and I think you also like the word um as well. Um, Wente, uh, you like kind of use the word uh and um a little bit interchangeably. So just maybe be a little mindful of that and try to take a little bit more of a pause. And um, Jen did a great job. And yeah, I think that kind of sums up the uh, grammarian report. I only noticed that Michelle used foment. If I'm missing anybody, please let me know. Because that's all I noticed. But that concludes the grammarian report. Too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Shout out, <laughs> shout out, Jenny. I'm sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. Very true. Um, so, thank you. I just post the link, the voting link in the chat. Everyone can uh, cast a vote for your favorite speaker of the day on the uh, table topics, on the speech and evaluator. And we'll count the um, timer word at the end of the, the meeting. Wente, would you like to give your general evaluation of the meeting while we wait for the, the awards? Yes, uh, actually I was thinking about round table, open topics. The last five minutes, everyone can, including guests, everyone is welcome to uh, probably share their opinion of the meeting. And let me see the time. Oh, we'll, we'll go for, uh, we have any uh, guests today? want to share your uh, comments in for our meeting. Cindy and Steve, what did you guys think of today's meeting? I thought it was pretty good. I don't have much feedback because it's still new to me, but I think that everyone did a great job. Keep joining, Cindy. I know you said, hey, I'm not quite ready to do the topics piece yet, but keep joining until you do. We hope to continue to to see you here. The more you join, the more you get to know all the people, the, the more comfortable that you will feel. Thank you for being here. Thank and you for having me. Yeah. <laughs> it's time for our awards. Are we ready? That's all right. Go. No? Let's go. Oh, okay, let's so come off mute and clap <laughs> and woo -woo for everybody. Yeah, come on. So today's today's a little easy. So our best speaker, can we guess who that's going to be? 
Yes, it Isha. may. Yes, it may. <laughs> My mentor too. Oh my goodness. There we go. Michelle! Yay! For our table topics, we have Kylie! Good job. Good job. And for our evaluator, you ready? Kylie! <laughs> Good job. Good job. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Thank you for participating. Um, and so let's wrap this up here. Um, so thank you everyone for joining today. We have a few open roles, roles for next week. So please think about signing up for, for a role you haven't done yet or a role that you really enjoy. Get those roles filled up. Also, just a reminder that next week is our costume. So come dress in a costume or change your background. Participate in the activities however you, you feel you, you would like to. And with that, um, I believe that's all I have. Winte, is there anything else that you'd like to bring on? No, I, I'm good. Yeah. All right. Thank you. So I look forward to seeing everyone in their costume next week, <laughs> seeing what kind of creativity we can come up with. And with that, have a wonderful day. That's good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.